stocks, bonds, and real estate. Those are all categories of, that you need to accumulate wealth. Let's bring in CFP Chad Burton to talk real estate. In 2009, no one wanted to talk real estate, but suddenly it's back in vogue again. Where are we at right now, Mr. Burton, as far as real estate goes? Well, it depends on what you're talking about because you know REITs used to be a very, very important topic in having a certain amount of your portfolio in REITs. And then there's rental properties, which if done correctly, are a great way to build wealth over the long term. I think we're done with the days of flipping properties. There's a lot of uh, private equity, private uh, money out there that are buying rental properties with all cash. So it's, it's definitely a competitive market right now. Yeah, I bought in 2009 and I'm thrilled. My neighbor who bought recently, I'm not so sure they're going to be thrilled in the years to come. Let's talk a little bit about liability issues in real estate. What do we need to know? Well, in terms of real estate, you know, it's not an asset's not an asset until you know you're going to sell it and live off of it. So until then, a lot of times anything with a mortgage is your biggest liability. So the problem is is that people get into real estate when they're not financially ready. You've got to you've got to build the, the stepping stones to get there. You definitely want to max out your 401k before getting into real estate deals because that that tax break, if you if you have a dollar you put into the 401k, the entire dollar goes to work. If you take it home, you only have 65, 70 cents to invest in real estate. So it doesn't work. So you gotta max out your retirement options, your 401ks, your Roths, you gotta have your emergency reserves, and I would say have at least one year's worth of your income saved in after-tax investments just in a brokerage account. And then save up to you know 20, 30 percent down payment, get a traditional 30-year mortgage and and have a renter pay that asset off for you. That's the only way that the real estate will keep up with stocks is because of that. That's the only really good asset that you can leverage. I had a friend many years ago come up to me and say, hey, do you want to start buying real estate together? I was like, nope. My instinct says it's a bad idea. What tips do we need to know about partnering on real estate? Well, have it very, very clear. I mean, I even did deal with some lots in Texas with my dad. He was a real estate agent and we we're supposed to build on him, but he was so busy with the rest of his business, I finally unloaded him. And, and the part of that issue is we didn't have a very clear operating agreement saying who's going to do what and what time frame. And so a lot of partnerships don't work because it's not spelled out. They're not in a good LLC with an operating agreement. Not everybody should have an LLC unless you're doing a partnership. And any kind of partnership has a, needs to have a very clear outline of who is supposed to do what. And if they don't do that, what happens in the dissolution? Every good contract has a way out. You, my friend, are a financial nerd. You have a partnership <laughs> agreement with your father? I is didn't. It? I should have. Right. Okay. So let's change the topic. Um, let's go REITs. What is a real estate investment trust and why should we care? Well, it's just publicly traded stock. They're just formed differently. They're formed in such a way that uh, to qualify for a certain tax status, they have to pass over 90% of their net income to investors. So they're typically high dividend yielding investments. So uh, a REIT can go out and deal in, in mortgages. They can deal in owning properties and leasing those properties out. And um, in the past, you used to actually have to go out and get individual REIT funds to get that exposure. But now what I'm seeing is a lot of mid-cap ETFs and indexes and a lot of large-cap indexes have a lot of REITs inside of them. So people don't have to be so worried about getting the individual REIT mutual fund or ETF exposure in their portfolio. REITs versus rental properties, which would you rather be? Totally different animals. Um, right. A REIT, you can push a button and sell it on your computer, right? It's gone. It's out of your portfolio. Um, a rental property has to do with cycles. It has to do with positive cash flow, location. It's a small business. So when we look at a portfolio, um, we look at REIT exposure as a piece of the overall asset allocation. Right now, I'm underweight to REITs. If interest rates are ever settled down and, and yields are back up to normal on REITs, I would be overweight. That's a different suggestion than, OK, I've got a rental property. It's giving me positive cash flow. Somebody else is paying it off. It's near schools. It's near hospitals. It's a small business, so you have to look at them differently. Now, private REITs are also in the news, typically not very well in the news. Right. Um, what is a private REIT and why are they in the news? Well, you know, a lot of brokers that work on commission sell these things as like bonds on steroids, but really all they are is kind of, you know, all you have to do is Google FINRA and non-traded REIT lawsuits and see that a lot of brokers are being sued for selling them. They're illiquid. They show up at 10 bucks a share and you get income for a certain period of time, but you never know what's going to happen until they either sell the properties or liquidate and go public. And there's really not a lot of positive success stories out there in the terms of private or non-traded REITs sold through a broker. So I would avoid them altogether. Let's bring up his contact information. He is CFP Chad Burton. I know you're clamoring to talk more REITs with him and real estate issues. You can find him at newfocusfinancial.com. That's newfocusfinancial.com. We'll take a break here, come back, talk more financial news that you could use. Rob Black, your money.